It was very important to me that the music not pay any attention to the genre of the film. What I wanted to do was to engage Hans in a very pure creative process. I was working on a completely different movie and Chris said to me, if he were to write one page of something, and he wouldn't tell me what the movie was about, but he'd just write one page, would I give him one day and just whatever came to my mind, I would start writing. What I wrote for Hans to get him started was some dialogue that, that I'd written for the film mixed with some ideas behind the film without any indications as to genre or scale, just to free him up from that. This is, of course, where Chris gets tricky, really about a father and his relationship to his son. It's only later on that I found out that the son wasn't a son at all, it was a daughter. I sat down and I wrote this piece really about what it feels like to be a father and what it feels like to have a son, and I was writing about my son. When he played me the, the piece of music which became the basis for the entire score, I, I thought it was absolutely perfect and captured the emotional qualities of the film that I wanted. And it was at that point that I told him that it was actually a, a large-scale science fiction film. But I hadn't given him any clues about that. You know, it's not an action film. It's not about man. It's not, it just isn't any of those things. I think what that did for him is it set him very firmly in a direction relating to the heart of the film. I mean, I listened to it extensively while I was finishing writing the script and then uh, when we were in production as well. We went to Temple Church in central London and we set up a mobile recording system. They really wanted him to use the church organ. And I also made the case very strongly for some feeling of religiosity to it, even though the, the film isn't religious, but that the organ, the architecture of cathedrals and all the rest, they represent mankind's attempt to portray the mystical or the metaphysical, what's beyond us, beyond the realm of the everyday. The live, real human will always give you this extra piece of magic. And we got plenty of magic in Roger. Roger was this sort of amazing human being that happened to us. This humble man who, who was just an extraordinary player. He would play me the, the sample and said, well, what have you got? And I would give him a selection. He said, oh, that's a little too heavy, or that's a little too bright, or that's a little too harsh. Once he began to realize what the capabilities of this organ were, he began to get more adventurous. And we began to sort of create as we were going, you know, how about this, Hans? Yeah, I like that, that's good sort of thing. But it's not what he had in mind. The organ really is a huge, complicated synthesizer. If you think about it, so you, ha you have a pipe, and air blows through it, and that makes a sound. And it makes the sound of one pitch. And then if you want to shift color, you add another pipe to it, and you add more pipes. And so it becomes these really very, very complex harmonic structures. And there was this endless discovery going on for both Chris and me, you know, where Roger would take us through all these different voicings and all these different colors. You can even go a little darker. Actually, then we should go for this sound. There's something very human about it because it can only make a sound with air and it needs to breathe. And on each note, you hear the breath. You hear the exhale. You feel a human presence in every sound. And I think that was very important to keeping the film about not just the space that we're looking at, but the people in that space. There's an intimacy as well as massive scale. Sometimes within a few bars, there's that, that shift. Pulling out all the stops, I now know what that expression means for, for real. <laughs>